Hey, welcome again. In an academic setting, we are usually given a set of parameters before we solve or design a circuit. For instance, the threshold voltage Vt or maybe the overdrive voltage, which is the difference of the gate to source voltage and the threshold voltage or maybe something else. Using the given data, we might be asked to calculate the width and length of the transistors required to meet the specifications. However, in an actual design process, there are certain things that are required to be done even before you start designing. That brings me to the topic of today's video. What is a PCD and how do we use one? In essence, PCD is like a manual given to the designers by the foundry, meaning the organization or team that would be fabricating the circuit on an actual piece of silicon or maybe some other substrate. The manual contains important information about the different flavors of devices in the technology. What do I mean by different flavors? Well, you have different types of transistors, resistors and capacitors with different trade-offs in their parameters. You might be familiar with native or depletion mode transistors whose threshold voltage can be negative for an N-channel device. You can have transistors supporting different voltages as well. Maybe you have a fantastic 1.8 volt device with minimal variations in its parameters. However, you need to design for a 5 volt supply. Now, can you use the 1.8 volt device? Well, you can, but only if you intelligently shield it and make sure that its terminal voltage don't exceed the limits governed by the PCD. Furthermore, different transistors have a different matching coefficient. Matching coefficient tells you how well do two identically designed transistors match each other on an actual circuit. That is an important parameter. For instance, you would want to have a fantastic matching between the transistors of the input pair of an amplifier to not have any inherent offset, which people call systematic offset. By the way, just a quick tip, the VT of short channel devices also varies with the width and length of the transistors. For certain cases, when you have tight targets, you might be better off adding devices in parallel rather than actually increasing the width per device. Back to our video, a technology also offers different types of resistors with different sheet resistances and temperature coefficients as well. You will have to look at the one that suits your application. Moreover, the PCD also tells you how many masks are needed to fabricate a device. Masks are like filters. They selectively, selectively allow us to deposit a certain material or dopant in a particular region instead of the whole wafer. The number of masks required essentially tells you how complex is it to fabricate the device. More the number of masks, more is the cost. Your boss might not allow that in some cases, so check that out as well. Now, the most important thing that the PCD tells you is that how much do the device parameters vary over process. To illustrate this, you are generally given the minimum, maximum and nominal values of a parameter. So for instance, the VT might be 0.5 volts nominally, but it can vary from 0.3 to 0.7 volts across process. There will be some additional variations due to temperature as well, perhaps even due to body effect. Therefore, it might even be challenging to set the right operating conditions for all the devices. By operating conditions, I mean maybe you would want to set all of them in saturation, but that might be hard to achieve. Note that in a real circuit, there are dozens of devices, each having its own variations. As a designer, it would be your duty to make your circuit work despite those variations. So next time when you begin to work in circuits, do check out the PCD and don't get intimidated by the wide variety of devices. If you don't understand the PCD, you can always characterize the devices in the simulator and see which one varies by how much across PVT and choose the one that you require accordingly. If you made it so far, thanks. Do consider liking and sharing the video. Happy learning.